Hello, this is Scotty Alvarez, and I'm the missional purpose leader at Crescenta Valley Church, and I wanted to encourage you this week as you are uh, just beginning your journey in the missional essentials and in owning what it means to be a missionary to all the places that you're sent, um, at your where you live, where you work, and where you play. And as you're just starting to um, see yourself in a new light as a missionary, to the local community. And as you're starting to um, see the situations that you go into in new ways, I just wanted to encourage you with a story that happened to me this week. I too am starting in the Missional Essentials journey with you. And uh, our small group just, just began their journey as well. So I am, I am going through this with you and it is as challenging to me as it is, is to you. And it's also as exciting of an adventure uh, to me as it is to you. And I wanted to share with you a bit of encouragement, uh, a story that happened to me um, the weekend after our small group met. So I'm, I'm thinking about my son's basketball team at Crescenta Valley High School, um, Go Falcons. And, you know, I am sent to that group of people. That is a context that is, a, um, that is a place that God has me spending a lot of time with uh, as my son participates in, in, the, uh, in the freshman basketball team. And um, I'm in the stands with the parents. I'm on uh, the group me app uh, with the parents. And I, am, um, and I am interacting with them uh, in the email blasts and, and volunteering for different things for the snack shack and for senior night for the varsity team. And something profound happened this past week um, that I wanted to share with you just as an example of what I'm experiencing um, as a missionary to Crescenta Valley High School and as a missionary to the basketball team there and to the people, most specifically the people who are involved with, with that endeavor. Um, our coach, uh, Henry's coach, had been having some heart issues um, the past couple of weeks, and they were planning a, a um, planning to have surgery for him, and so he'd been missing some of the games. And um, I've known the coach as an acquaintance, but I haven't known him well. I don't really know his family. I don't know him personally. But um, uh, Friday. So this is two days after our small group met, and I was my my head. I was thinking missionally. I was seeing myself as a sent person. Um, I showed up to the game, and the coach wasn't there. So this is this was now the third game that he in a row that he wasn't there. So I, I finally said to the parents around, "What is wrong with coach? What's what's going on?" And somebody said, "Well, he had a heart attack this afternoon, and he's in the ER." And so I, I watched the game and, you know, the boys did not play well, obviously without their coach and they hadn't been playing well. And, you know, the assistant coach is, is a young man and he's, he's doing a wonderful job, but it just isn't the same without their leader. And so I, I was just thinking about that, and and then as I went to celebrate recovery that night, it was it was heavy on my heart. And I got up the next morning, and I started contacting people on the team. Does anybody know what hospital he's in? I just felt so clearly that God was saying, "You are sent to this team, and you need to reach out to the coach, and you need to use the social media, use the internet, use the resources that I've laid out for you. These these." very loose acquaintances that you have on the team and you need to organize support for this coach because he's in the hospital and um, he had to go through an emergency um, emergency heart surgery. So right away, Penny, um, right away, she just immediately jumped on it. She said, call the hospital, call his room. I'm going to go uh, get a card that all the boys can sign and all the parents can sign. I'm going to go get a plant for him. And um, it just so happened that the boys were practicing at CV High at, and their practice was about ready to end. 
And so I called the hospital and they said, yes, he's here. He's okay. His surgery was successful. He is open to seeing, uh, seeing visitors. And I said, well, is it okay if I talk to him? And she said, let me check. So she put me through to him. And I've only had a handful of conversations with this person all about basketball. But that was just enough that I was able to say, hey, coach, we really miss you. How, how are you doing? And I was able to say it in such a way that it, that it wasn't just a perfunctory, oh, I'm fine, I made it through, but I really was going to press through and, and, and be with him in this moment, even though it was just over the phone. And again, this was, I hadn't had this, that many conversations with this person. So Penny was out at, at Ralph's getting his plant and getting the card. I was on social media with all of the, the parents and sent out an email to the, to the entire uh, the varsity, the junior varsity, and the freshman team, letting them know that I, I had talked to the coach and, um, and that, that um, if anyone wanted to come uh, with me, I was going to go to practice at the end of practice pick up as many boys as I could, hopefully some of the other parents would join me, and we were going to go to the hospital and visit him and, uh, and just be there with him as he, was, as he was recovering in the hospital. And so, so that's, what we, that's what I did. And you know, I, I asked him as I was on the phone, is it okay? Are you willing to see visitors? And he wasn't thrilled about that. Um, and I didn't tell him what I was thinking, but I just simply said, well, we're, we're going to come see you, and um, and that's what we did. You know, all the boys got together. The assistant coach, who's a young man in in his you know in his early twenties, he's in college, um, loaded up a bunch of cars. A couple of the parents, we loaded up a, a, all the boys in the cars, and we drove to the hospital, and and we got there, and we were able to 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 see him. And all the boys were in the room, and there was a handful of parents, the assistant coach, and they were all just able to be there with him. And if you know this coach, he's, he has a strong sense of humor. He's, he's, he's quite a curmudgeon. He's very funny, and he's, he's old school. He, he, you know, he demands team above all else, and um, you know, he's a disciplinarian. And the, all the boys are, are frankly scared of him, even though he does his best to relate to them and, and joke with them. But they're scared of this guy. This guy is, is, is their disciplinarian, and he does a great job with them as 14, 15-year-olds. And he, he just, I've never seen him, you know, he's there in the hospital with his gown and, and he's recovering, he's, he's weakened, but he still has a sense of humor and, he, and all the boys are around and he just immediately starts coaching them. Hey guys, I know, you know, I haven't been there and that you guys haven't particularly played well and, and you guys are, you know, don't worry about me and he just is coaching them. You know, I, I told you at the beginning of the year, the operative word was being flexible. You have to be flexible. You have to be flexible in life, and you have to be flexible as a part of this team because there's only five guys who can be on the floor, and there's 15 guys on this team, and I don't know who I'm going to need in a particular situation. You have to be ready, and you have to be, you have to be flexible. And he said, now, when I said that to you, I didn't think flexible meant, meant you were going to have to do without me, but that's how you're going to have to be flexible. You're going to have to do without me for the rest of the season. And they have their, their in contention for league championship. Um, they, they have five games in the next seven days. And the coach was telling them, I'm going to do my best to get back, but I may not be able to be there. Um, he has to have two more surgeries, um, hopefully only one more, but probably two more. And um, the first surgery was successful. And it was painful for him. You could, you could feel it in the room and yet the boys for the first time they saw him just as a human being not just as their coach and disciplinarian but as a human being and so 15 boys around him at his bed a handful of parents and then Penny to her absolute credit she, she came to me she looked at me and she said we are not leaving here without praying for him 
let's pray for him. And I, being the, the wonderful uh, missional leader, I turned to her and I said, I don't, I don't know him. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I can't. And she just looked at me and said, we are not leaving here without praying for him. So thank you, Penny, for being the most missional of the two of us. And so we, we put our hands on, we asked him, coach, is it okay if we, if we pray for you? And we said, you know, to the other parents, is it okay if you guys would like to? And to the assistant coach, if you would like to, we want to pray for coach. And we just put our hands on him and, and prayed for him. And it wasn't a particularly profound prayer. It was, you know, I was stammering. I wasn't really sure what to, what to, what words to say. And so I kind of stumbled through it. Um, and afterwards, you know, after we all went home and the boys got dro dropped back off at the school and, um, you know, we left the card that all the boys had signed and um, we left the plant there with the coach and, uh, you know, Penny in the car, she, and, and then afterwards she said, you know, there were tears streaming down his face. I didn't even see it. So as I'm praying, I'm just thinking, <laughs> thinking, Jesus, just get me through this prayer. And I found out later that it was moving. Now, I don't know this person's belief. I don't know, I didn't know the belief of any of the people in the room. But I went back and I wrote an email and I, I went on the social media and I let everybody know, Coach is doing great. And, uh, and there's about 60 people, 60 families in the varsity, junior varsity and freshman program. And I just, I let them all know that Coach is doing great. Uh, we saw him, you know, the surgery. I gave them the details of the surgery. I, I said we prayed for him, and then I started getting responses from some of the other people on the team. Some are of, of some of the kids are, are Orthodox Armenian. Some of the kids are Mormon. Some of the kids have have you know are are not religious at all or don't don't have a faith to speak of. And I started hearing back from the parents. Thank you for doing that. There was an openness. All of a sudden, this door started opening. And one of the parents whose, whose son is on varsity and is a very influential family who I never knew, I, I'm just very faint acquaintances with them, uh, they said, we go to the church up the street and we've been there for 20 years. And so now, and, and she is the head of the booster club, someone who's very influential with all of the parents. She does all the organizing for everything. So that's where it was left. But look at, look at the missional activity that's happening. Just because I was in the right place at the right time, I didn't do anything special. Most of you watching this would have, you guys would have reacted much more quickly than I did. You would have jumped on it. You would have, you would have had a much greater response than I did. I'm not, I'm not, the best hospital visitation person, um, but when I had found out that he, that he was in the hospital that morning, something missional in me that the Holy Spirit, whose heart is missional, whose heart is he's ascending God, he just seized my heart and said, and I knew I had to be there. And Penny jumped into action. There was no hesitation. The parents jumped into action. And look at the look at the openings now. Relationship with the parents that were there. There's a there's a different quality to that relationship now. It's beyond just being an acquaintance. Um, I know there's some spiritual conversations that are going to come out of that. Um, the assistant coach, you know, I offered to help. Anything I can do to help. If you need me to be there. Anything that I can do, you know, I offered some specific things. He declined them, and that's okay. And I just said, I just want you to know that I'm that I'm here to help you. Whatever you need, I'm here to help you. So I was able to encourage the assistant coach. Um, and I was able to then have a deeper connection with some of the parents um, over, the, over the social media and the... Uh, and the um, and the internet. So 
look, just because I decided to see myself as a missionary to this team, look at the change that has happened, look at the doors that are starting to open, look at um, the, the relationships. Now, I would never wish this on anyone to have to go through a heart attack, to have to go through heart surgery. Would not wish this on the coach. That's not what I'm talking about. I know God's going to take care of him. But I'm talking about, look how God used this situation because I was choosing, and my wife Penny were choosing to see ourselves as sent people to this group of people that God has us with, that he opened doors, he, um, he started using the situation to um, start to woo, woo people to him. Now, now, what I'm praying for is, Lord, I don't totally know what you're doing here. But I know you're at work. I know that you are actively at work in the process of redeeming the Crescenta Valley High um, basketball team. And I know you have sent other people who follow you that are participating in that. So thank you for sending me. And Lord, how can I participate with what you're doing? Not how can I save. Not how can I be in charge. Not how can I um, do, the, do the saving work for you. Lord, how can I get on your wavelength? How can I be aware of, Lord, make me aware of what you are doing in this context. Make me aware of how you are at work actively redeeming this, this context, this subculture, this group of people that you have sent me to. So, as you are learning these principles, as you are learning the theological foundations of what it means to be a missionary to the people God has sent you to, as you continue with the missional, missional essentials, I challenge you to start looking at the places God has sent you with new eyes. And please, as, as you start to hear the stories, please send me the stories, send Pastor Scott the stories, send Roberta the stories, we want to hear your stories because it's in community as we start to hear each other's stories that it becomes easier. As I hear your stories, that gives me more energy and more faith and more belief that, that I can move and be bold with the people I'm relating to. So friends, we do this in community. That's why we're doing this in small group. So I'm sorry this ran long. The other videos in the upcoming weeks are going to be shorter, but I wanted to share that story with you. I wanted to encourage you to be with and for the people God has sent you, the people whom you live with, your neighbors, your family, the people where you work, your office, your clients, your bosses, your patients, your team, your collaborators. And I also want to uh, encourage you to be with and for those people where God is sending you, where you play, the coffee houses, the restaurants, you know, the pubs, the, 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 the teams, the schools, the, uh, the mommy and me groups, the daddy and me groups, um, all of the places where you play. I want to encourage you to begin to see them in, in new eyes and to send us your stories. So thanks for letting me share. I look forward to um, talking to you guys again soon.